I'm going to be using my used book paper and I'm going to be using my craft paint and a really super rough paintbrush. Big paintbrush too. And I'm putting paint on it in a way that it doesn't look like there's not like big gobs of it on the tip of my brush. And I'm doing that by putting my paintbrush into a puddle of paint and then on the side brushing it out. I'm also using a dry brush. So this brush has never been in water. I mean, well, not this time. It's dry. <laughs> and there's a really big difference in the marks that a dry brush will make as opposed to a wet brush. So once I got some paint on there, I am just going to go ahead and kind of just dab it on there. Just get some marks going. I'm just making collage paper, so you know there's it's very non-specific. Now I can grab a different color, do the same thing. I'm still working on a dry brush, even though it's getting wet with paint. And this dry rough brush is going to allow me to get these really great marks on here that are not things that you can easily control. And I think there's something really important about that when we can just let go of control. Okay, set that aside, grab another sheet. Probably end up with a little bit of a mix of color on this one. The really interesting thing about making collage papers is when you do something like this, it's it won't look like much on on your page, but when you use this as a collage paper, you can get some really interesting things going in your work. Now I'm going to purposefully create a series of these little papers with the same colors of paints. Doing something a little different on each one. I'm purposefully working through these quickly. I don't want to get caught up in too much thinking about what it is I'm doing and if I like it and if I don't and all of those judgmental things that can come into our mind when we stop and and really think about what it is that we're doing. There's something really freeing that happens in your art when you can come from a non-judgmental place. Okay, I'm going to do something a little different on this one. I'm actually going to take my brush and cover over most of this page. Now when I use, when I do collage, I generally do not use the straight edges. Um, so, it's, you know, I might use some of them so I can get my paint off to the edge if I want. But for the most part, I'm going to be using that center area. Like I said, these are not necessarily very pretty, but I 
you can do some pretty amazing things with collage when you just use paper that has marks on it like this. Okay, so I played around quite a bit with my dry brush. Now it is a wet brush. And I can keep playing with this brush. Or I can switch over to a different tool. I can use a different, you know, shape of brush. Maybe size of brush. Can do different things with different brushes. These brushes are going to make very different marks than these did. So for example this one since it's really thin I can create thin lines with this because it's it's got a thin side to it and it's also got a wider side so then I can vary my lines with it. But you can see even the bristles on this brush are are very different that it creates a very different stroke on the page a lot less rough than what I had on there previously and so now this has added a little bit of contrast a little bit more interest to what I had on here and yet I'm just adding to what's already there I think I'll continue with this brush and make some more marks. When you're doing this kind of work, try to get really non-specific about what you're you're doing. You're not creating anything. Your mind might be challenged by that. Might feel like, well, what am I making? What am I making? You know, and it might struggle to to do that. And just keep going. Don't let that stop you. Don't let that turn you away. Don't let it slow you down. Keep going. make short marks, you can make long marks, you can make short and long marks. Just vary it. Play with it. Never know what's going to happen. For the most part, I've made straight marks. Now I'm going to make circles. Play around. When I'm doing this, I'm actually twisting my brush as I, as I go around. Try making circles on your page. If you don't twist your brush, it's going to feel and come out very differently. Try doing it both ways. Just overlap your circles. Make your circles imperfect. Change the, change the colors of your circles.
Make lines out of your circles. Through your circles. Make arches. So just by making mostly lines and some circles, I was able to create quite a bit of variety in these pages. And when I put them all together like this, there, it, there's something that's like, wow, I didn't realize how wonderful these came out until I can see all the differences and all of the variations. And these are going to make some very interesting collage papers. I really like these. So I'm going to set these aside to dry. I'm going to call these done. When you know, when you work them into uh, a collage, of course, you're going to be adding more layers of paint on them. These are just little starting things that help you to create collage that has your unique mark to it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to I'm going to I'm going to stick with my these colors of paint because I still have some of that paint on my palette. So my goal at this point is to kind of use this up so I can switch colors. So I'm going to grab um, a couple of stencils and do a few with stencils on them. Now for stencils, one of my favorite tools to use is these cosmetic sponges. And just like with the dry brush technique where you don't have gobs of paint on it, also with your sponges, if you have a gob, you can kind of see that gob on there. It's going to push underneath the stencil. So I'm going to dab it off to the side, really similar to what I did with the, the dry brush technique. And since this paint that I'm using is super opaque, it's going to cover up the words of the book page that I'm using. This stenciling technique is also a really great way, as you can probably see, of using up the paint on your palette. A lot of it ends up in the brush. True. But it uses a lot more paint than a paintbrush would. Well, I guess it's depending on the size of your paintbrush, too. So with one page, I was, I'm was i successfully able to cover this whole page with this stencil. And even though it's opaque, some of the words are showing through. And I got to use up that color of paint. And now that that is looks very interesting because you know it's got the the text behind it. So I really like that. Grab another sheet. Grab a different stencil. And a different color. I'm going to use up this brown. I think I added some gobs of paint on there. I'm not being very um, good about getting the paint off of my sponge before I put it down. That's okay. It's just going to make for a, a messier stencil. I won't. You won't get as clean of lines if you have a lot of paint on your sponge. 
looks like I'm going to run out of paint on this one. I'm going to try to use up whatever is left on that palette. All right, that's good. And again, you know, just adds a there's there's a lot of interest here in the fact that my sponge was really dry over here and didn't have much paint on it, made light marks, and then it was really wet up here, so it kind of squished underneath the stencil and really added some interest the fact that I didn't try to do this perfectly. So that came out really nice. I really like that. Since I'm done with the brown, I'm gonna go ahead and take this and just put it in my water dish. So I just take my sponges and put them in there so they don't dry out and I can wash them and reuse them. As long as you don't let them dry out, you can they're, they're, you can get like unlimited lifetime use out of the sponges. So my palette, my palette over here is a little bit wet with that paint. So I can either grab a new palette or I can take like a paper towel or a rag and kind of wipe this off so that I can get kind of a dry surface to put on some more paint and not have it get muddied up. So now I have a, well, it's not clean, but you know, I can put some more colors down. So I am, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go with colors that are going to look good with the previous stencils that I did because I want to create different papers that will harmonize and look good with these. So I'm going to actually purposefully pick out colors that are, here's my other paint that I had, that are going to look good with these. So I got a dark green, a light green, and an even lighter green. I like that. So I can put my browns away. And put some of these on my palette. Now I have a nice little variety of green and all of my greens go together well. You notice I didn't pick out anything, you know, like a, uh, this is a tart apple green. This is like super, super bright compared to these ones, which are more muted green. So I'm going to stick with the more muted colors because those are going to look better with my browns. And I may choose to put some of these colors on top of, of these collage papers too. I haven't decided yet. I just know that I have some new colors to play with. One of, one of my next favorite techniques to to do is using a, a card or some sort of card, some sort of plastic or cardboard doesn't work as well because it's going to, well, get all soggy on you. So I'm just using a an old gift card and picking up some of the paint on my palette, just on the edge of my card. Yeah, I, got, I got quite a bit of a puddle on there and then scraping it onto my page. What's really great about this technique is no matter how opaque your paint is, it's going to go on in a way that is transparent. And just adding that to this page. I mean, this is a collage paper right now. It, it doesn't, I don't have to do anything more to it. It's already got its built-in texture because I, I used a page from a book and by putting the color on the way that I did, being imperfect, it's got some texture from the heavier parts to the lighter parts to the no parts. So this is actually good to go. And since I have one sheet that has a nice solid color of my colors, I'm going to go ahead and create three more pages that have these solid colors on them. I 
using a different color for each one. And while I have my, my scraper tool out and going, I want to grab one of these ones that I did and put a layer of green on top. See what happens when I do that. Maybe I'll just do it on like one side of this page. Keeping in mind that these are collage papers, so I will probably just use parts of them. I can start to change my colors even as I go along on this one. This is almost like painting with a plastic tool. Besides the uh, scraper tool, I also love to use silicone spatulas. I pick these up in the dollar store. They are wonderful. They're wonderful for spreading paints. They're wonderful for spreading glue. You can get a really nice thin layer on there, but it's kind of it's. You can brush it back and forth like you would a paintbrush. Silicone, think of this as a silicone paintbrush. These are really great for like on the go um, work too. A lot of these ones you can just pull the silicone tip off of them. This is like the go-to paintbrush. I could, I could get different sizes of these and um, when you're on the go you don't have to worry about ruining your brushes. You know, you might want to have some like uh, baby wipes or wet naps handy to easily clean, to easily clean off your brush. Really great travel tip is to use these silicone tools for that. In fact, you can even buy tools um, similar to this. This uh, actually has a sponge tip on it, but you can buy um, brushes. Oh, here we go. So you can actually buy silicone brushes like that. They're really the same thing, you know, a little different. I love these. Um, more so because they have the nice curved edges, but these are very different. And, um, but you can get all of these different sizes in them. So you can get these different types of tips. I think that I've probably got five of these somewhere, but there's only a few in here. So these are really great for making marks. In fact, we'll just go ahead and, I'll just go ahead and do that right now. One of the things that I, I, I don't generally paint with these because they don't hold paint. As you can see, I'm, I'm only getting like one line, like barely one line out of it before I run out of paint. But it does add some interesting lines that are very difficult to control, which at times that can come in handy. So the very, the, it creates these very imperfect lines. I'm just playing around seeing what other things that I can do with this. Very different from painting with a paintbrush. And you, all you have to do is wipe it off. You don't even have to necessarily have anything wet. Um, Something maybe just a little damp can help get it all off of there. But otherwise, you know, you don't have to worry about getting things all 
messed up messing up your paintbrushes. Okay, I would not say that I, I'm I, I, that I'm very happy with this page. There's a lot of different things on it. There's a lot of parts that I don't like. But here's the here's the reality of it. When I use this page in collage, I'm going to tear it into pieces, and I may only use a very small part of this page. Now that is interesting. This pattern on here. I like this as as opposed to I didn't like it when it was all together on one page. So just to kind of give you an idea of the transformation that your collage pages can take when you tear them up like that. And that's what we'll be doing with the collage. Another tool that you can pick up are tools that give you these little rough edges. There's a lot of different things like this. You can find them. I know at the at the dollar store sometimes you can find things like this in like the cake decorating section. They've got some really interesting ones for decorating cake. If you go to the art store, you're going to be paying a premium price for these. So where you buy them and what they are being sold for makes a huge difference in the price that you pay. If you buy artist supplies, you're going to be paying artist prices. Here's another one that um, similar to this one. This one has all very sharp edges, but this one is all buried. It has some some funny little I don't even know what that's supposed to do, um, but all different edges on them. This one is probably one of my favorite ones. As you can see, it's I've used it quite a bit because it does make various marks. So let's go ahead and play with that. And if you don't have something like this, I'm sure you can find something that will create texture, even if it's like a, a, a comb, um, some sort of a brush, maybe that um, like a scrub brush that the bristles aren't like all put together. Maybe there's a little space in between them. Look around, see what you've got. When you're using tools like this, it really helps if you let go of your expectations. If I would have expected it to do something specific, I, I think I would have been disappointed. But if I can just kind of go into this going, hmm, I wonder what this does and approach it more with curiosity than with expectation. I think all of your art can benefit from that to approach it from curiosity instead of expectations. And then see how many different marks you can make with the same tool. I'm using the same end on it. And I'm going to grab another sheet of paper. I'm having fun with this one. And try laying it down in different ways. You know, you can take it and swirl it around. See if you can make circles with it. Oh, wow. Well, that's cool. Then, of course, there's always, you know, getting the paint off of the brush or off of your tool. Now I've got this weird funny little curved end of, that splits the, ooh, wow. Let's see, that does something different. I could even put a line of paint down 
and then take my tool. Let's see what happens. It's not really moving the paint around a whole lot is what I'm seeing. It's kind of staying in a big puddle right there. Maybe this one will move it some more. This, this piece of paper might just end up being a test sheet. <laughs> so I have some gobs of paint on here, which are, are interesting, you know, um, definitely added some texture to it. Will definitely take a while to dry. Or instead of waiting, I can take another piece of paper and put it on there, press it on there. I could even use my little brayer. You could just use your hand too. You could use your scraper tool to flatten it out. Oh, I just got some paint on there. Don't wait too long to peel it apart. And now I have kind of like, you know, like, like the ink blot blobs. So this one just kind of looks like I scraped some paint on there. So maybe I'll, maybe it's time for me to use up the rest of these. Use up the rest of my paints. Going back to the silicone spatula, you know, for the most part, I've been kind of brushing things on, but what if I take things and just kind of dab them on there? Depending on the material that you're using, it's going to add a unique texture onto your page when you just dab it down and lift it up. So play around with that. See what happens when you just dab something down and lift it up. I could do that with my card too. It adds a very organic texture to it. So if you scrape on, I'm just going to use up the rest of my paint again. If I scrape this on in a way that kind of comes out thick, so depending on how you angle your tool, and I, this could be either or, if you lay it down more, um, so it's going along more flat like that, it's going to come out thick. If you go along where it's on the edge like that, it's going to come out thin. By putting down a thick layer of paint, then I can take one of my tools and scrape through it. And instead of using this to apply paint, I can use it to remove paint or create texture in the paint. That works much better. All right. I think I'm ready to use another color. And again, I want to create, let's see, let's get out one that has I want to pick out paints that are going to go with these colors next. I think I'm going to go with some blue. Now, one of the things to note that, you know, I, I have a lot of paints because I, of course, I do a lot of this type of thing. So I'm always picking up more paint. So I had a lot of different um, shades of blue that I could pick from. And I love having all of these options. But if you don't have all of those options, you can, of course, modify your colors by just having one that's white. 
and starting off with something that's you know having just if you have a dark paint and a white paint you're going to be able to get a lot of variations out of it I don't think it you can always add black to things but I think it it works better to start dark and lighten colors up so that always works too so I may even I, I may play around with that a little bit Another thing that I do with my craft paint is I store them upside down. Makes it a lot easier to get the paint out when it's getting towards the bottom. But you do want to give them a good shake once in a while. Okay, so I ended up using all of the collage papers that I had, so I'm going to go ahead and cut some more. And I am cutting my collage papers out of this used book, but I plan on using this book as a altered book. So what I've been doing is I've been going through it and just taking out two or three sheets of paper throughout the book. What this does when you when you're making in uh, when you work in a book as an altered book your artwork can tend to thicken up the pages so by removing pages you can kind of eliminate some of the natural thickening that can happen and I am using a blade to get these out because these pages are come out really super rough if I try to tear them out. So I just kind of go through it randomly and pull out pages. Okay, I got some more to play with. I'm going to go ahead and keep playing with this idea of removing paint. So I'm just going to put down an area up here and then take one of my tools and scrape that away and then maybe just wipe off the paint on there. Try the little circle, twist it around. Now, if I take some of this paint and put it up here and I grab a little bit of this white. A lot of times these craft paints won't mix up like you would expect them to. But you can see I got a very similar color to this by just mixing the dark blue with the white. I mean, you probably can't, couldn't even tell the difference between these two. It's really, really similar. I wanted to get this on wet so I could scrape it, but it dries so fast. Just going to do a little cross, crisscross. Let that dry. Might as well do some, some stencils on these too. Another thing that you can use for doing your stencils are these natural sponges. 
these work really well. Um, this one, a lot of these can get really dry. So um, I'm just gonna, I'm just getting it wet. This is gonna help it to not just absorb all of the paint that's gonna end up in the sponge. Um, if the sponge is already saturated and I'm squeezing out the water so you know it's not drippy. It's going to make it so my paint's going to go farther. It's not just going to end up in my sponge. I don't think that this is going necessarily going to add anything different than using a cosmetic sponge, but we're going to give it a try. Might go in a little wetter because, you know, my, my sponge is wet. That's going to definitely change the texture. And I can even, since this paint is so wet, I can get a print out of this stencil. So I can lay that wet paint side down. Now I use my stencil like a stamp. really love that. That is super fun. These are some of my favorite stamps or stencils. Love that. I'm going to take this one that I did that stencil impression on and do this one. That just really messed it up, didn't it? <laughs> it totally messed it up. Now you could just take your sponge too and play around with putting paint on without stencils. These, um, the organic sponges are going to add texture. You can use these to add texture to your pages. Really great for shadowing and shading and adding some variety with some texture. Again, with this technique, less is better. Less paint on your sponge is going to produce better results on your paper. Okay, wow. So I got a lot done there. 
with my blues and my greens and my browns. Let's see what we got. Some lovely, lovely blue designs. Gotta be careful not to overlap my papers too much because some of these are still wet. And acrylic paint will act like glue. And I got some greens. And of course my browns. I got more here than I can display, but I'll put a, I'll put them all out. I'll put out what I can. <laughs> Fun stuff. And keep in mind, you know, you don't have to use a, a used book for this. Although I think um, having paper with something on it gets a texture already going on the page so these could these could be anything I do I'll, I'll do this technique with magazine pages and craft papers and and even uh, things that you've already done in the past maybe you've done a piece of of uh, artwork that you don't necessarily care for cut it up tear it up into little pieces and turn that into collage add more texture to what you have you know mess it up even more get some satisfaction out of it can be fun to play when you can let go of your expectations and move into a place of curiosity so have fun mm -hmm.